Dr. Stan Monteith practiced orthopedic surgery in Santa Cruz for 35 years, and he led a delegation uh, to, of course, the uh, was an advisor to the State House and is an expert on AIDS being a government bioweapon, syndicated talk show host, fighting the New World Order for almost 50 years. Uh, he joins us better uh, better a bit late than never. I backed him off 20 minutes to be able to finish my alert, and then we had ISDN issues. But he joins us now. RadioLiberty.com is his website. Doc, you know, I, I know you're back about the whole Iran thing. And uh, since you were on, SecDef Sec came out and said, yeah, the war is on in March, April, or May. Uh, Netanyahu says stop chattering about it. Uh, all of this is getting crazy. They're saying Iran's going to attack domestically. Uh, when that would bring down absolute, you know, bloody, you know what, on them. And then meanwhile, there's all these alerts. There's going to be a new Oklahoma City. I mean, can you not, do you see the same chatter I see, the same preconditioning to roll out domestic terror attacks as a pretext for a further clampdown, uh, Dr. Monteith? Absolutely. I think there's no question at all. This is what they intend to do. They intend to create a situation of chaos and crisis to justify the implementation of the dictatorship and everything is in place. I mean, it is just simply so amazing. I mean, uh, everybody in this country, in fact, everybody in the whole world now has a number. They're, they're numbering all the people over in India. Every person in America has a number. Uh, we get it at birth. I said that they have their cameras out. Everybody has a card. You use that card uh, for purchases, a Visa card, a grocery store card. They know uh, and they keep a list of everything you buy. They have dossiers on everyone. Uh, the DARPA has a dossier. Homeland Security has a dossier. The FBI has a dossier. The CIA has a dossier. I've seen my FBI dossier. Page after page after page blacked out in the name of national security. I said they, they tap our telephones, as you know, to Echelon. They read all of our emails and all of our faxes. They were doing this long before September 11th. Project Echelon, E-C-H-E-L-O-N. Anybody can go up on the Internet and see it. They have their fusion centers. That's what they correlate. Our, They're our now dossier. saying CIA is going to operate domestically, totally illegal. It is a lawless takeover because they're collapsing the world economy. I mean, remember 10 years ago they say we were conspiracy theorists for saying derivatives would be used to implode the world economy and bring in a world government? Now the U.N. says world government, world hmm. tax. It's all here. Absolutely. This is what it's all about. Everything is about establishing that world government. And that is why we're going to have this war with Iran. And, uh, of course, what I'd sent to you it had been uh, based upon a, uh, a more or less covert meeting held at the uh, Council on Foreign Relations at their Harold Pratt House, 5080 68th Street, New York City. And because I'm a, 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 a media person accredited uh, for the CFR material, they were kind enough to send me the transcript of this meeting. And the remarks by a man named Matthew Kronig, who'd written the lead article in the January-February issue of Foreign Affairs magazine entitled, Time to Attack Iran. That was the title of the article. And here in this, uh, this private briefing, and you have a copy of it, why he is explaining to the members of the CFR, a very small group, apparently from the uh, from the report there, there were not too many people in the audience, oh, but he was explaining this whole rationale uh, that, uh, well, of course, Iran has not decided to build a bomb. Iran hasn't started to build a bomb. Uh, Iran is cooperating with the inspectors from uh, the International Atomic Energy Commission, but they might at some time in the future decide to build a bomb. And since we cannot live with a nuclear-armed Iran because they might uh, give the technology to somebody like Hugo Chavez, therefore we have to attack, and we have to attack now, but we will do a surgical attack. It won't be a regular attack. It will be a surgical attack. Uh, that we will leave uh, Iran's uh, nuclear, uh, uh, military intact so that they can retaliate against us. Now, why, if you were going to attack a country, would you leave their military intact so they can retaliate? But that's exactly what he's advocating. We will not try to bring down the regime. We will not try to hurt their military. So they can attack us because they have to attack us to maintain credibility. But then after we've absorbed their attack, 
why their counterattack, uh, then we will tell them that simply cool it, everything's going to be fine, uh, we'll go on as it was before, uh, without ever bothering to consider what would happen if, if Iran were, say, to uh, sink one of our carriers or two of our carriers and kill a couple of thousand people. What would our leaders do at that time? Uh, this gentleman talks about, in his experience, he's a relatively young man. Uh, he, has he forgotten what happened during the First World War when it was just supposed to be just a very, very temporary war? Suddenly, uh, everybody anticipated the Boer War was going to only last for a few weeks or a few months. People were talking about Korea with the slogan, our boys will be home by Christmas. That was 1950. We are still at war with Iran, with North Korea. Our, our troops are still stationed in South Korea. Um, 60, 70 years later, uh, 60 years later, uh, this gentleman is a man who makes major decisions. He was a senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense. He is currently the uh, the Stratton um, the Nuclear Security Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, a professor at Georgetown University. And he is telling us, in my experience, you know, I don't think the retaliation will be too bad. How can he be certain that this won't trigger a major war? Well, he says, I think it won't. Well, we can't have people saying, I think, and yet he points out that other people in the key positions, like Dennis Ross, who you have pointed out was a member of the Trilateral Commission. If you look at the current list, he's not listed there, but he was listed before. When you join government, you, when you go into a key position in the State Department, you have to resign from the uh, Trilateral Commission temporarily, which Dennis Ross did. But Dennis Ross is saying exactly the same thing representing the Trilateral Commission. And, so and by the way, Doc, I, I was talking off record to a major media figure, and he was telling me how he's been in newsrooms and seen them say, kill that Ron Paul story, <laughs> uh, say he can't win. And he was telling me how most of the big national radio host, because he, he's seen it, he was giving me names and everything, it's, it's delayed more than 15 seconds, not for callers, but that they even delay most of the big national talk show hosts whenever they don't like what they're saying. And I said, well, what are they? And he, uh, he, he said, well, there's only about 30 things. And I said, what, you mean cuss words? He goes, no, you can't say trilateral commission, CFR, New World Order. Now, now, if those things weren't real, why don't talk about it? Well, see, and then if anybody ever calls in, Limbaugh laughs about it. That's because that's the real government. And look, the U.N. this week admitted global government, said they want a world tax. They've stalled us this whole time. Now we've been proven right, and it's just incredible. It's just incredible. Well, I think you're doing a great job of waking people up. I know an awful lot of people in our area listen to your programs. And people are be realize what's going on. Uh, we just have to reach a lot more people in a short period of time because... I, like you, sense that we're moving into a very, very difficult period. I think it's going to be this year. I don't know what's going to happen. I think there will probably be a war of some sort with Iran. But I think, as you point out, it's going to be used to justify implementing the uh, the police state. It really is planned. There really are FEMA camps. Uh, there really is so the, uh, uh, there really are militarizing our police. They're preparing the police to uh, work with the federal government to establish a dictatorship. That's what the National Defense Appropriations Act was all about, where, of course, it was said, you know, something that they can arrest anyone that's declared to be a terrorist. And when they wanted to amend that and say, well, but this will not include American citizens, that was voted down. They would not allow that to be included. They know exactly what they're doing. But this is not allowed to be uh, certainly mentioned on, uh, on uh, radio or television. As you said, in fact, many years ago, I was on a uh, talk show. I was in the studio with Jim Eason up in San Francisco. I think I can say that now because he's long since retired. But oh, this was 25, 30 years ago. And he said off the air, you know, if anybody, t uh, if I s went on this radio and I said what I really believe about what's going on, I would be fired tomorrow. 
we went back on the air and he said, if anybody told me what to say on this radio station, I'd walk out of here right now. And he looked over at me, smiled and winked. That's the way what's really going on in America. At the time, people understood that the media is controlled. In fact, everything, every aspect of our society is controlled. Uh, but fortunately, for the first time now, we have alternative radio. We have uh, uh, the Internet. Essentially, we have shortwave. People are waking up across America. I think it's amazing Ron, Wall, Ron Paul is doing as well as he is. Um, Sydney, remember, he's only really dealing with Republicans. Almost half of the American people are registered as independents, and they're not going to vote for the Republican candidate. If Ron Paul were to get the nomination, he would pick up a majority of the independents. I honestly believe that. And an awful lot of the Democrats who don't want another senseless war. Because when you start a war, you never know how it's going to end. And uh, the, our leaders are intent upon start, starting a war with Iran, anticipating a retaliation. And what happens if the Iranians lob a hundred missiles at Israel or a thousand? Well, it's perfect. Israel gets to attack them. The Mullahs right. stay in power forever. Every study shows that'll empower them. In the West, they can take more of our rights and liberties. Tyrants everywhere get power out of a war. War is the health of the state, and we're fighting statist insiders. And the globalists have stolen over $27 trillion in the last few years from the U.S. alone. And they're going to keep doing it because they can always blow stuff up and blame it on, the, on, on their opposition. And, and that's how it works. And uh, you got a lot of dumbed-down control freaks that like their black uniforms, doctor. Well, you know, the interesting thing is right now, of course, the people of Iran are very unhappy with their government. There's a tremendous amount of unrest. But if we were to attack Iran, which I think is what is planned, then that's what this whole idea of time to strike Iran, this lead article in Foreign Affairs is all about, and what Dennis Ross and the other trilateralists are talking about. But if we were to attack Iran, it would unite the Iranian people behind the mullahs. Not only that, but I fear it would unite of the two branches, the major branches, the three major branches, the Muslim faith, the, uh, the Sufi, the Sunni, and the Shia, against the common enemy. Maybe the, the Shias and the Sunnis don't like one another. But if we were to get to, to attack Iran, I think we would unite the entire Muslim world, which incidentally, we are uniting. We're behind all of these uh, re revolts going on over there. We, the, uh, These countries, one after another, are falling under the control of the Muslim Brotherhood. Who is the Muslim Brotherhood? Why it was organized? by American and British intelligence agencies in 1928. We have a book called The Devil's Game. It goes into the background of how it was the British MI6 that organized the Muslim Brotherhood back in 1928. And the sure, the whole thing. Stay there. we got to go to break, Dr. Monteith. Stay with us. This is key information straight ahead.